Okay guys, so uh, welcome back to the channel. So I figured today I'd start talking about the diplomacy system and more importantly, uh, the authority system that this game has that doesn't, isn't, it's kind of a, almost a footnote. So um, I really want to tackle that. The diplomacy system, as you guys will see, it's kind of similar to the past games. But uh, yeah, before I start, let me just say, uh, if you guys uh, are enjoying the Nobunaga's Ambition content, please consider subscribing to the channel. Uh, leave me a like down below. And um, let me know what you guys think of the video. If you have any questions after we're finished, uh, let me know about diplomacy or the authority system. Um, so with that, let's start. So diplomacy, right? Um, the first thing is, even if you're a big force, if, if small force, big force, it doesn't matter. You need to have allies somewhere okay you could be you could be shingen if you allow yourself to have no friends right then when the time comes for war you you will be picked apart and i'm not saying you can't fight everyone off okay you could you could do it um but more likely than not you're gonna have a waterloo situation and uh you know that's going to be it for you so you need to have an ally and if you don't have allies you need to have a you need to have an escape plan for when everyone starts attacking you so this situation here this is my current like uh my very first playthrough now i got invaded by the shogun we just drove him off and now the miyoshi his allies are are trying to bring in the coup de gras against me um so we're just trying to limp past the finish line here now I would have been done a long time ago if I didn't if I didn't start with this alliance to the Asakura so speaking of the alliances right there's just two buttons for it and it's pretty straightforward goodwill you, you use goodwill click on any force that's around you the range is a little weird like you can see you can reach out pretty far pretty far towards the west over here but towards the east it's kind of sort of some nations some not I'm not sure how it's determined but anyway any nation that you want the main thing that affects it the game because all you're all you're really doing once you click on goodwill is you're gonna send an emissary that officer is gonna be locked up he's there's gonna be a cost every month to try to get these points of trust build up and you can choose a target between reinforce alliance and mediate now once you get the points built up, after a while, you're then going to hit, same thing, you go to Diplomacy, now you're going to negotiate. And all you're doing at that point is you're using all the points that you've banked with that uh, particular daimyo to negotiate a deal. So again, all you're doing, pretty straightforward, just hit Square, Diplomacy, go to Goodwill, choose somebody to send. Now, as far as choosing your emissary, you need to know that you can only send a lord, uh, which is some the guy who's in charge of one of your other castles, your daimyo himself, or you can send somebody who has a captain rank, who's an attendant. So, if you have an attendant who's just sitting around, he's not doing anything, and he happens to have captain rank for some reason, you can send him. Otherwise, you're going to have to send the lord of one of your castles or your daimyo himself. And you can see right now, I can't do it because both of my available people, my daimyo and my lord, are both building uh, castle structures. They're adding structures to the like the uh, the specific building additions. So because they're doing that, I can't conduct it even if I wanted to. Now, if you have a bigger force, you're probably not going to have this problem. You'll have, you know, if you're playing as a bigger force and a bigger starting date, or let's say the Takeda here, you're probably going to have a nice list of people that are either sitting around or are not building something right now. If you're a smaller force, I would consider starting diplomacy right away. You know, just kind of choose who you want to be allied with. Um, consider who they're allied with because if you're playing on normal difficulty or higher, making an alliance with a force could piss off other forces. So it's, it's interesting. You have to consider, like, for example, if I make an alliance with the Shogun and he doesn't get along with uh, with this guy who's in charge of the Western Takeda, 
then making an alliance with the Shogun could in turn piss off this guy. So in this situation, that might not be in the might not be a big deal. But in another situation, if you make an alliance with the Shogun and you have a force like Shingen's next to you, that might not be worth it for you. You know, because you're going to draw the ire of Shingen. And at that point, you have to just figure out, are they getting along or are they not getting along? So you have to do a little bit of guesswork. But I'm pretty sure this is only for normal difficulty or higher. I had seen it somewhere in, during the tutorial it mentioned. So somebody correct me if I'm wrong on that. Um, outside of that, once you figure out who you're going to do, who you're going to uh, get this uh, trust started to build up with, just set it and forget it. Set somebody, set a goal. I always set alliance. I don't bother with reinforce. I go straight up to alliance. Sooner or later, you'll get that notification that it's done. You'll have a little meter on the side there. Then you can go to negotiate. So right now, let's say I want to negotiate with uh, these oh, guys. I, well, actually, I'm not allied with them. Let's what go does the this We're already in alliance with them. But you can see that you can spend the trust that you've banked up. You can cash it in. Uh, you know, if you play any action RPGs, you've done like a consume build. It's the same thing. You're just building it up, and then you just consume it. You spend it all to get a benefit. So you can make an alliance. Um, Vassal or Submit is uh, pretty rare cases. But you can essentially try to make someone your vassal. You can submit to a bigger force to become their vassal, which can buy you protection, right? Reinforcement, ask for help. They can, you can uh, ask, they can ask you. Mediate a truce. Uh, you have a marriage alliance. Actually, I haven't done marriage alliance. I'm not sure how binding, like how effective that is. Title for the shoguns. You can just dismiss the uh, the alliance completely which don't sleep on this on quit dissolving an alliance can be useful if you're allied with a force that's on the down you know that's on a downward trend so if you're allied with uh, let's say you're allied with the uh, Imagawa with Yoshimoto pre Okehizama and you know that's gonna trigger at some point like just like the uh, Takeda where you might you might want to consider dissolving the alliance because you know where things are going to go and so it'll help you get out of it and start taking their territory adding it to your own without any real penalties to it you know you'll, you'll upset them but you know that they're going into a downward trend so quit can be very useful just if you're being very observant of what's going on immediately around you or you know right outside your borders you know i always consider like what's going on in my immediate circle of territories and what's going on on just on the outside of the of the little bubble here so definitely don't you know don't sleep on that i'm being able to just say okay what does I quit this, this alliance uh you can form a truce usually this is after you get a big victory or a big loss and tribute is just to speed up the process now that pretty much covers it. You may have an officer that will help you. If you guys didn't see my traits video, uh, I think that was the last video. So if you check, go to the traits video first of all, so you can see how traits work. But there are officers who have traits. Let me see if I can bring that up. I don't think I don't think because I have one. There are officers who have traits that will help you speed up the trust process getting trust up oh here we go like this guy i think he's got flattery oh no that's not okay it's usually it's going to be a purple it'll be a purple purple trait so purple traits are usually covert traits so look for one of those check them out you might have an officer that's going to help with that now okay so the other thing that's not mentioned too much in the game but can be really important is authority so when I went to go to Goodwill you'll notice that they have different stances different attitudes towards me and prestige comes into this but more important than prestige is authority in this so the Shogun had invaded and we were outnumbered and we scored a huge victory against them right an outnumbered victory when you win a battle that you're projected to lose at least on paper and the more hopeless that battle looks and you turn it around you get 
a much bigger authority effect. What authority can do is it can turn the attitudes of all the other Daimo in the region favorably towards you and disfavorably towards the guy who attacked you. So all these guys didn't care too much about me until we scored that big victory against the Shogun. After I scored that victory, I think we were outnumbered almost two to one, if not a little bit more. And so after I scored that victory, the, the authority effect went off. So what happened is everyone's attitudes went, uh, for me went up by a little bit. Some people, friendly is the best, cooperative. You can see the arrow there. There's one, one blue arrow there, so that's cooperative. That's kind of like amicable. Uh, for anybody who's played romance, that's amicable, what they usually use. And friendly is kind of like almost trusted. You know, it's basically what used to be called trusted. And on the flip side of it, you have hostile, which is, uh, there's no, there's almost no coming back from hostile. That's like a personal feud almost, because we started like this with them. Um, same thing, hostile here, because we've just been consistently at war. Usually with hostile, to fix that, you have to settle a truce. You have to bring some cash, something. You have to get a truce done with them to be able to reset it. But having cooperative will increase the rate at which you get trust points from forces. And having friendly increases it even faster. And you get this by triggering an authority effect. So when you go to battles, I can show you here. If I just hover over my uh, daimyo here, it should tell me Right there at the top, it says battle victory will trigger no authority. Okay, so you say, why is that? Because our numbers are pretty close. So when I go under the battle tab here, you can see I have five units at 6,000. He has more numbers, 1,500 more, but it's not an insane disparity, right? And if I look under here, it says if I win this battle, I don't gain any authority. But if I do lose this battle, my authority, I will have a weak, so it will affect me negatively, not by a great amount, by a small amount, it will affect me. That's probably because we're just, we're still coming off the high of turning back the Shogun's uh, crazy horde. I wish I had recorded that, but I didn't. That, that battle was insane. Like I said, this is just what I have left. We're just limping along here. But yeah, another effect that authority will have is that counties will flip and join your side. So I defeated the Shogun, this was his county. After I defeated him, this county flipped over to my side. So I essentially gained territory. It changed hands without me invading him. It was on, on the other hand of it. With him invading me, this county's opinion of our force grew so much that they just came over to our side. So we gained this territory. And also the Shogun, he didn't lose prestige, but his diplomatic relations with other forces has worsened because of the huge upset. He was supposed to crush us, and instead he got driven back and routed completely. So it's really it can be really important if you can create these situations. On the flip side of it, if you're if you're a large force, you know make sure that you don't get upset because if you march into what should be an easy victory and you get completely destroyed or you get routed, it can affect how your neighbors view you. So you could start a downward slope just from that. All of a sudden people say, okay, I guess you weren't as great as we thought you were. You're not that big of a threat. So you can have things like vassals who will leave you because you lost a battle, kind of like what happened with the Imagawa over here, where Ieyasu left the Imagawa because of Okehazama. He said, okay, well, you're, guy, you're clearly on the downtrend. You got totally destroyed by the Oda, so I'm going to leave. I'm not going to be your vassal anymore. So stuff like that, you can have really detrimental effects to you if you're a large force. If you're a small force, look for these opportunities to pull off the upset. This game does allow you enough in combat where you can create uh, insane turnarounds. You can, you know, snatch victory from defeat. Um, with proper tactics, with, you know, with a little bit of luck, of course, and all that. So, um, yeah, that's the authority system. Like I said, there's no real way to really track it. 
you just have to hope when you're about to start a battle hover over the force it'll show you it'll say okay is there authority gained for this battle yes or no but usually you can eyeball it and get an idea look at the troop disparity and then consider is it worth it to commit to this fight you know can i can i win this fight is it winnable and if it's one if if you even have a 30 percent chance <laughs> sometimes i say i would say it's worth it just to go for it because the the effect from that win can change everything around you these guys didn't want anything to do with me rokaku didn't want anything to do with me and neither did the saito clan but since i won that i'm not going to be able to leverage that into alliances which will help me secure these guys and i can focus on my enemies over here this alliance over here so um so yeah that's gonna be it for this one um if you guys didn't check out my uh traits video i say uh check that out it explains the traits and the synergies how to how it's gonna help you form armies and of course the prestige video um that's another thing that's not it doesn't it's not too in depth explained in the game but it can be very very important for your battles it can really help you just steamroll over people sometimes uh, if you're able to get prestige and if you're if you can plan for it plan if you can build your clan around gaining it you know at a decent rate so uh, yeah like I said the next video I think we'll be talking about uh we'll probably settle this battle here I'll probably uh, show that how that plays out and I'll explain some of the battle mechanics and uh, yeah I hope you guys are enjoying the videos like I said make sure you subscribe for more content and I'll see you guys on the next one